So I would just say, you know, master your energy. Do your best to master your energy and your and what you put out, unless that's what you want. You know, because you you entitled to whatever you want to create, whatever experience you want to create for yourself. But if you're tired of that shit, adjust the energy. You know what I mean? As best you can. Adjust the energy. Adjust the energy. What a profound thing to say. Adjust the energy. We've always said that money is energy. And if you want to send that energy in a positive way, it's going to come back to you positive. If you want to send that energy in a negative way, money will come to you negatively. So your choice, waking up every day, even after watching this video, what energy do you choose to have with your relationship with money? What's cracking, everybody? My name is Smart Guy, Matt Zapala here. Hey, Lynn, to you from Dallas, Texas. And once again, we are here with another reaction video from the legendary Nipsey Hussle. Many of you have been asking us, can you do a reaction to this guy? Can you do a reaction to this guy? And we're listening. And for the future, if you want us to react to any other mogul or somebody that you hold into high esteem and the breakdown of finance, the breakdown of entrepreneurship, put it in the comment section below. We are listening to you and we're gonna do our best to meet your need. So that being said, uh, the name of this video is called The Wisdom of Nipsey Hussle. And uh, wisdom is a very big word with me because uh, it's not just academic smarts. And for all of you at, that have uh, college degrees and masters and PhDs, or even for some of you that you were the first person to graduate a high school diploma, wisdom is more than just education, more than just academic smarts. If you combine wisdom, in my opinion, which is education times experience, that's wisdom. And uh, let's get into what Nipsey Hussle here has to say as he's running his life and his businesses. You know, I be juggling. You know what I'm saying? I juggle a lot. I play a lot of positions. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, um, my mentality when I when I do start to be like, damn, this is a lot. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, you know, this that's what it's supposed to feel like. If if you are going toward what the vision look like, and that's like greatness. That's you know, on multiple levels. Mm -hmm. That's the vision that I'm working toward. So I'm like, that's awesome. You know, oftentimes people work for just surviving you know there's four phases of money there's four phases that you'll go through as it relates to you climbing the economic ladder first phase is survivability most people just want to get out of survivability phase and there's a mindset as it relates to survivability there's an attitude and there's a disposition and there's an outcome as it relates to survivability but once you get out of survivability now you got status second status you got you know, the fame you got the Opportunities open your way. You got the money. You got uh, things that uh, normally would not have come your way, but now starting to come your way. Doors, certain doors are closed and many new doors are open. You got status now, okay? People will respect you. They're starting to look up at you. All right, you're on the come up. And the third phase of money is freedom. And you have financial freedom. You've got food freedom. You got relocation freedom. You got opportunity freedom. You're not looking at things like, oh, I don't have enough money to do it, whether you got credit or cash. You got it. So you got freedom now. In the fourth phase, which I believe that Nipsey Hussle started touching in on in what he was fulfilling in his life, which was purpose. Because he realizes as you grow through your career, as you go through your business, much more things open up your way. You see more inside of you than you thought was possible. And you want to advance because you start cracking over that potential and you want to take the next phase. I just think about that, like this shit ain't supposed to feel, you know, comfortable. It's supposed to be uncomfortable. It's supposed to stretch you. It's supposed to be a burden to a degree. And you gotta, you know, wrap your mind around that and accept it and embrace it. And you catch some wisdom off of that. You know what I mean? You know, sometimes uh, you get to a level of success in your life. And what he said there, sometimes success happens to be a burden, but that's a good burden. You know, I think Biggie Smalls had it wrong from many people's perspective and perception of it. More money, more problems. But you realize that it's actually good problems. You got more money, better problems, but at least now you have the financial resources to take care of it. If I'm going to have problems, I don't know about you, but if I'm gonna have problems, I'd rather have problems with money than without money. Nah, you know what I'm saying? We used to have a studio set up here. You know what I mean? Good old whiteboard. motivation on the wall, you know what I mean? We brainstorm round table. A lot of times if we enter the studio, we enter the shop, we come on mat, you know what I'm saying? You got you gotta all money in, you know, stay focused. Quitting is not an option. Six O's make a million. Big money owns. He's got you know, affirmations all over the place. Like, affirmations you know what I mean? all over place. You really going? Affirmations all over the place. Different things that you wake up to, you know what I mean? When you're on this marathon. Words is powerful. I was about to say that many of you think that these are just corny sayings, that these are just cliche. And he already just said it. Words are very powerful. 
and most people's words to themselves, sadly, is negative. So in order to reframe or reprogram your self-talk instead of being a majority negative, you gotta reprogram, reframe your language to yourself, which is positive, and that has helped tremendously by words and affirmations, the people that you're surrounding yourself with, the books you're reading, the things that you are, are, are seeing on a daily basis, even he had on his wall, quotes by Napoleon Hill. The ability to articulate, you know, you can, you can, you can really impact people. I think as human beings, everybody has a natural gift and a natural passion but then by the way as i continue this reaction video what was your favorite nipsey hustle song what was your jam put in the comment section below my personal favorite grinding on my life grinding on my life that's my jam right there uh what was yours put in the comment section below you go outside and you get influenced and you and you feel pressure from from what's going on outside and so you know i read one time like would you rather be at war with yourself and at peace with the world or at peace with yourself and at war with the world. Mm -hmm. And that was powerful for me. Now, that was a profound thing. Oftentimes we think that the war we've got going on is external, but tremendously the war we have is internal. I see that when coaching people with finance, with entrepreneurship, that they either have a fear of failure or sadly the fear of success. And that is a war of their identity. There's a war of thinking what other people's opinion about them are if they start rising up and coming up. What war do you want to fight? The war of fighting your fears of failure or fear of success? Put it in the comment section below. I'm curious. Most important thing, number one, is you got to get rid of doubt. If you got doubt in what you're doing, it's not going to work. You know what I'm saying? And the way to do that is you have a plan. Because if you got a plan, it's not like just a pipe dream. I love that. You have a step-by-step -step list of things to do to get to your goal. If you don't have that, it's very hard to really have faith in what you're doing. Because as soon as something pop up, it's going to look like the end all. But if you got a game plan of everything you need to do, you know, one thing pop up, well, I still got to do this, 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 and that, so this thing will stop me. You know what I'm saying? Another thing pop up, well, shit, I accomplished this two things. I Since my last obstacle, I only got three more things to do. Let me keep pushing. Fuck it. Pretty soon you, you, you attained your goal, and then you create another one. But without a game plan, without a, a strong sense of faith in what you're doing, it's going to be real hard to accomplish anything. And I know, you know, it's a lot of obstacles out here. Family, baby mamas, the legal system, trouble yeah, with the law. Tell them, tell them, Nipsey. You know, your homeboys being involved in a, in, in a crab in man, the bucket going syndrome. Too soon, man. Where you All know this what I mean? You're making moves and, and starting to make your way out. And people start trying to attach themselves to you. It really become weight, you know what I'm saying? Extra weight. What's crazy, man? I mean, he, come, he comes from South Central, man. And for him to be thinking like this, even though he was immersed in an environment which was opposite of this, Man, what a gift he had, man. What a, what a purpose, what a, you know, what a calling he had. And uh, I hope with the reaction to this video and many others that he has out there, we continue to share the legacy and the wisdom of what Nipsey Hussle went through in his life and that he can impact many people continuously throughout the world as long as this video is up on YouTube. But I want to point out what he said here is that many people doubt, many people fear because they don't know the exact plan or exact turns and twists that they're going to go through. And for them to get out of poverty, for them to be financially literate, for them to be financially aware, for them to have better behaviors and actions as it relates to the money, a lot of people just don't have a plan. But once you do have a plan, assuming that you do have a plan, and by the way, there's so many plans out there, just Google it, how to get rich, how to stop being broke. There's plans out there. Now, once you have a plan, you got to take action. It's one thing to have a plan because you, you'll have a lot of blueprints out there. Success leaves a lot of clues. And there's a lot of successful people out there on social media, if you vet them out properly, that actually give you credible, tangible plans to get you out of debt, to get you out of your grind, to get you out of your dead-end job, to get you out of the failures and frustration that, have you with, that you have with your business. There's plans out there. And once you have that plan, now you got clarity. And once you have clarity, boom, now it's about taking action and kicking down that door. And sometimes it's like kamikaze, they blow themselves up trying to stop you. So, you know, you just gotta, you gotta have faith in what you're doing and not take no for an answer and you'll get it. It'll be a long run, but you'll get it for sure. You gotta go hard, you gotta believe in yourself and you gotta have a sense of humor and know that bullshit is gonna happen. You can't be too serious about it, too emotionally affected when bullshit happens. You have to just stick to the script, believe, have overwhelming confidence be your own biggest fan, your own biggest believer, 
and put it on your back and carry the weight. You feel me? Yeah, absolutely. I feel you, man. So when you're going through your in, your savings and investment plan, you're going through your entrepreneurial business plan, the, mar the market is going to react up, down, up, down. You're going to have people say yes to you. People say no to you. People return things back to you. People quit on you. People that you thought was your ride or dies. Next thing you know, they're stabbing you in the back. That's going to happen in the journey of you recreating yourself. And as you're rising up, you're going to give birth to two people. The first person you're going to give birth to are your ride or dies that you never thought were ride or dies. Man, I didn't realize you felt this way about me or the direction I'm going. Man, I'm so glad to have you on the journey. Fight breaks out. You're showing up. You want to fight. You want to have my back. Awesome. These people are going to show up. These are going to, people are going to be your allies and the people that you can count on and trust. The opposite is true. When you decide to recreate yourself, you want to give birth to your financial success, you want to give birth to your entrepreneurial desires, guess what's going to happen? You're also going to give birth to doubters, trolls, enemies, and vultures. Just be aware of it. It's going to happen. And the higher you go, the deeper the degree it's going to have. We are at, the, at the bottom level, you didn't realize that, I thought you were my ride or die. I thought you were my friend, you're my family member. I thought you were down for me. No, really? You really hated my come up? Seriously? It'll shock you. Or the people that were with you for a couple of years, three years, 45 years, now they turn against you. Weird, but it's part of the journey. And you got, as Nipsey said, you got to be your greatest fan. You got to be able to say, man, I'm reaffirming myself. I'm on the right path. Some people just did not have the capacity to handle your success because that caused them to have to grow, expand, and recreate themselves as well. And a lot of people just don't want to do that. Success to me, I say it a lot, is just being able to do what you love to do and, and support yourself off of Live your dream and do what you love to do every day. So I'm successful in my eyes, because I don't sell dope, I don't go to work, but I do music and I love to do it. And that's all I have to do to maintain. Number one, you know, I just feel better, homie. I sleep better, you know what I mean? I just, I got a, a level of like, I'm at peace with what I'm doing. I feel good about what I'm waking up doing and about my lifestyle. At one point, I, mean, I, I wasn't proud of my lifestyle. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't, I wasn't content with what I was doing on a day-to-day -day basis. I wasn't happy with that. So it was eating at me, even right. though I'd be on the surface, cool and straight. Deep down, I wasn't, I knew that this wasn't the direction of what I need to be doing. You know, when you see people have a good day, bad day, regardless of what they're going through, you may not know it, it's always great to have a great sense of grace and forgiveness extended to them. And I hope somebody extends that same grace and forgiveness towards you because you may not see it, but deep down inside, people are bubbling up. They're frustrated and not happy who they are. Things may look great on social media, but deep down inside, they're not happy. They're broke. They're not successful as they may portray on social media, but have ex extension of grace, have an extension of forgiveness, have an extension of, listen, man, how can we help each other? How can we get you to the next level. And once you have awareness of that, you're able to swallow that pride, you're able to swallow that ego and say, listen, what do I need to do to get to the next level? And you are able to reach out and up to ask the right people for help. It's amazing what your life can turn into by getting to the next level and having the humility to go forth. You know, I'm reminded of this, um, as we're talking about wisdom, I'm reminded of this proverb, the beginning of wisdom is this, get wisdom. Though it costs all you have, get understanding. Cherish her and she will exalt you. Embrace her and she will honor you. She will give you a garland to grace around your head and present you with a glorious crown. What is this? Wisdom. Learning from other people. And by learning, you'll also realize the source of where it's coming from. I'll continue here. It also says here in verse 13, it says, hold on to instruction. Do not let it go. Guard it well for it is your life. Do not set foot on the path of the wicked or walk in the way of evildoers. Man, that's from the wise and rich of King who have lived here in the book of Proverbs. So let's continue with this. Now I wake up with the feeling that I'm going in the direction that I'm here for, like what I'm on this planet for, I'm doing it. When you don't have resources, you're in survival mode. Yeah, we just talked you know, about so that. Being in survival mode automatically rules out a lot of things yep. because you don't care about morality because you don't experience morality you experience survivability you know just, just, the need to survive making it the you next don't day experience you know fairness you don't experience planning for the future you just experience my ribs touching yep you know what day mean? To day. And it's better me than you and you know it's a survival instinct that kick in so i think once you get out of the survival mode your, your morals come back closer to to your daily decision making you start thinking about what's right and what do i believe in yeah one of the greatest things is coming against america right now is a lot of people just living paycheck to paycheck 
survival mode, brokenness in families, brokenness in homes, brokenness between husband and wife, brokenness between relationship between parents and their children, brokenness in our country, brokenness with our relationship with our, our government and our political and, and, and religious leaders. There's a lot of brokenness, a lot of poverty, a lot of money situations getting a lot of people twisted. And the sooner you have a game plan to get out of being dependent upon other people, you can start depending upon yourself and that's why we're always advocating that whatever job you have, you always have to start some form of side hustle, side business. And that side hustle, side business becomes eventually the primary business. Because once you realize that you can start creating your own bread and making your own money, the pride and the, and the, the success, that feeling of achieving a goal, outside of somebody saying you are worth this or you're going to work this to this time or I got you my thumb on your forehead or I got your schedule because I'm commanding your schedule, your vacation time. I can't tell you how unnerving that is to not having control of your life. I was there when I was serving the United States Marine Corps and I got married, divorced, had a kid, filed bankruptcy all in the same year. I felt such a lack of control. I was in control of my military career, but when I came home or dealt with the bank account, dealt with the kids, dealt with whatever piece I had left over after the divorce, those pieces were shattered and I did not know how to put them back together. It was until somebody showed me a path of, hey, here's how you put those pieces together. This is a different platform. You're gonna be introduced to another way of thinking, another career that you never thought you'd ever do in your entire life. And just being open to it and being able to execute, you're gonna find a way then by having a plan, by getting out of survivability. But until you get out of survival mode, you ain't got time to be worrying about right and wrong. You worrying about bottom line, you know what I mean? By any means necessary. So I think that economics is the answer. Yep. Empowering people economically yes. is how you really, really impact. But I don't know if it's about dropping a bag of money in the hood. By the way, today that's a very unpopular way of thinking. Why not drop a bag of money in the hood? But here's what I do know, coming from Chicago. In the hood, there's a lot of money in the hood. I remember uh, uh, our first home was on the west side of Chicago, right? Mayfield and Thomas right next to Loretta, Loretta Hospital in Austin. It's called the, uh, uh, the Austin District of Chicago. That was my first home. My parents came here as immigrated from the Philippines. My mother was a nurse. My father used to walk my mother to the bus stop every day for her protection. Anyway, make a long story short, right there on Madison and in Pulaski, and many of you from Chicago know what I'm talking about, you can see all the stores left and right, north and south, right there on Madison Avenue. All the stores, even the high-end Foot Locker's there, whatever that the high-end brand is of a Foot Locker, it's all right there in, in the west side of Chicago. There's a lot of money in the hood. It's just that the lack of awareness of what to do with it, the lack of education, how to invest it, the lack of examples to go back to the hood to show them, here's how to invest like rich people do to break this generational curse and install generational wealth creation, which is a term I think that a lot of people use loosely today, that's when you start making change. I think it's about impacting culture in a way that, you know, the mentality changes. Um, I, I couldn't Amen make a that. statement to just the young people doing dirt. I don't think that's honest. You know what I mean? It's context for everything. Nothing happens in a vacuum, you know? But Eventually people find out. You know, I've, I've always said this, for, for people making money illegally, and I mean, if, if you look at uh, so many different ways, uh, uh, so many different movies that glorify making money illegally, if you just took that same energy and found out how to use that same energy to do it legally, man, imagine a life where you're not having to look over your back. The pillow is soft when you do it legally and ethically and you're doing right by people. And a lot of people start talking about you in a positive way. But I would say that, you know what I mean? You're gonna lay in the bed you make. Mm -hmm. You're not gonna get pillow away soft, with nothing. Man. In terms if you of are doing it the right way. You know what I mean? You might beat the, the camera or the police. They might not catch you for what you're doing, but the energy is always going to return to you. So when, you, when you're just living in this, in this cycle of being negative all day and just putting out negativity, and, and that's the only energy you're putting out, it's going to return to you in a different form than you put it out in. So I would just say, you know, master your energy. Do your best to master your energy and, your, and what you put out, you know, and, um, unless that's what you want. You know, because you, you're entitled to whatever you want to create, whatever experience you want to create for yourself. But if you're tired of that shit, adjust the energy. You know what I mean? As best you can. Adjust the energy. 
adjust the energy. What a profound thing to say, adjust the energy. We've always said that money is energy. And if you want to send that energy in a positive way, it's going to come back to you positive. You want to send that money in a negative, that energy in a negative way, money's going to come to you negatively. So your choice, waking up every day, even after watching this video, what energy do you choose to have with your relationship with money, with your relationship with your business, with your relationship with no longer being stuck in survival mode? I'm, listen, I'm nobody special. I came out of Chicago, family's first generation born in the Philippines, and uh, I was raised in an Italian, African-American, uh, Hispanic, bohemian type of neighborhood in the, in the Cicero, Burns, Stickney area of Chicago. And uh, we had many different cultures. It was a melting pot. And you knew what gangs were there. You knew what people said about each other from a racial standpoint. But never did anybody talk to us about improving our lives from an economic standpoint. And when somebody does, can't tell you how great that feels for you to finally have a plan, for you to have a right mindset when it comes to these things. So if, if you want to help out your community, be selfish for a little bit. Channel the energy back to yourself. Recalculate and recalibrate. And how do you want to send out the energy to bring good and positive to you? Because the opposite is true. If you, get, if you bring negative, there's going to be get negative. But you put positive, it's going to put positive. Evil will never leave the house of one who pays back evil for good. So if you think that doing right by people is doing wrong to them, but it's good to you, well, guess what's never going to leave your home? Guess what energy is never going to leave you? That negative evil energy. And that will get you... Nothing. You might have your short-term win, but long-term, you'll have nothing to show for. Adjust, adjust what you wake up thinking and what you say. And then, lastly, what you do. And that's not an easy thing to do because it's, it's such a pressure in, the, in, the, in these areas to just go by the, the way things are. But, you know, it's a lot of examples that you could look up to as young kids in the streets. You could look up to, a, you know, a Kendrick Lamar. Not the words, forget what he's saying, just where he came from. I seen him, you could, you could YouTube him freestyling in the Nicholson Garden Projects. You could look up to a Nip Hustle. You know, you could look up to any one of these guys that came from this, this, this hopelessness and, and, you know, wiggled their way through it. You know what I mean? And you could reverse engineer what they did. You know, look at the steps, what, what, what happened? Well, there it is, man. Nipsey Hussle. Listen, I don't know all the details of uh, the sad murder of this, this young mogul, but uh, I'm so glad that his words are still here on YouTube. His words here are still blessing a lot of people. I believe uh, Kendrick Lamar just came out with a, a track this past weekend where he had a lot of people over uh, his face and a lot of face that was inspiring to him that um, he was giving honor and credit to them in his, in his song and his performance. But uh, what do you take away from this? There's so many things you can take from the wisdom of a Nipsey hustle. And my big takeaway is this, where your current circumstances are does not define you. The current circumstances you have in terms of your, your job, your income, your economic and socioeconomic status, it does not define you. That's just your starting point. And yeah, it might be behind a lot of other people, but the benefit here of being in the United States of America, at the very least, the benefit we have here in this great country is that we can do something about it. You know, I often say in, in entrepreneurship, I say, listen, I care less the color of your skin, whether you're black, white, brown, yellow, purple, don't matter. As long as you have the mindset of attracting green in your life, care about any race. As long as you care about the human race, a lot of great things are gonna start coming your way. So that being said, let me know your thoughts. You agree with me, you don't agree with me, put it in the comment section below. If you haven't seen our other reactions to other videos here and other moguls, please check out these other two videos right here too as well. If you thought that this video provided a little bit of value to you, please consider hitting like. If you watch a couple of our other videos and you have not yet subscribed, please consider hitting subscribe and notifications to be alerted the next time we upload our next episode here on the 7 Fear Squad, a channel dedicated to help you think like a millionaire, strategize like a millionaire, so therefore you can become a first generation cash flow millionaire. From Dallas, Texas, I'm your Mighty Smart Guy, and until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be mighty smart today.